Hello, everybody, and thank you for joining me today. It's Alan Barry Labacan with the Rocks and Stocks News Show. Um, I've got an exciting show prepared for today. I spent several hours preparing for this show and uh, got some great stuff to show uh, Google Earth stuff, some skit share screen. Really excited about the group of companies that I'm going to talk about today. They're going to be I-80 Gold, Paycor, uh who else we got we got golden lake uh timberline nine mile metals sokeman uh high gold uh walker river resources galantis prismo and fireweed zinc um, and uh, I'm going to get right into it. At the end of the show, I'm going to talk a little bit about the trends in gold, but uh, let's get right into the companies. I, I'm not going to punish you with too much of my uh, my face made for radio today. I'm going to be doing uh, most of this on share screen. So we'll get right to it. And the first company I'm going to talk about is I-80 Gold. Uh, I-80 Gold has a... Um, let me just get this share screen the way I want it. Uh, let's see here. Okay, so I-80 Gold. What I've talked about in the past with I-80 Gold is, I think that um, really I've said um, that you could, uh, you could um, just look at the headlines from the company and um, you would get a pretty good ha handle on uh, what they're doing. So let's start with the, this is their latest news release. I-80 Gold expands high-grade gold mineralization at Ruby Hill. Results include nine grams per ton of gold uh, over 51 meters, 14 grams of gold over 14.2 meters, and 11 grams of gold over nine meters. Let's go back to another news release. Uh, uh, November 14th, I-80 Gold Hilltop Discovery Yields Bonanza Grade CRD Mineralization at Ruby Hill. Results include 60 grams of gold, 908 grams of silver, 15.7% lead, and 1.1% zinc over 10 meters. Uh, also in that was 1.9 grams of gold, 631 grams of silver, 33% lead, and 7.4% zinc over 18 meters. Uh, let's just keep going down the line here. Um, uh, Rizzo's stocoping study. Okay, November 1st, IED Gold. Intersects high grade gold in Granite Creek underground drill program, including 28.2 grams per ton gold over 17.8 meters, 39 grams of gold over 9.5 meters, and 20 grams of gold over 21 meters. Folks, these are thick intersections of high grade gold. Um, South Pacific zone at Granite Creek on October 18th. Releases high-grade gold from South Pacific. New assays, 23 grams of gold over 5.3 meters. 9.9 .9 grams of gold over 11.5 meters. 15 grams of gold over 6.8 meters. You, As I said, you can just keep going down the list of the great stuff they're getting at Ruby Hill. And at um, October 5th, here's Ruby Hill. Um, I-80 Gold discovers new high-grade gold zone and expands min mineralization at uh, Ruby Hill, 11.88 grams of gold over 18.3 meters, 11 grams over 16 meters, 14 grams over 12.8 meters. Um, what really got it all started, uh, let me just pull up that, I'm really impressed with that. Um, that uh, uh, Ruby Hill project, um, where is that news release? There was just a massively thick intersection uh, that really got it started for the um, Ruby Hill project. 
uh, at Ruby Hill. Oh, here it is, May 10th. High 80 drills intersect 7.1 grams per ton gold over 78 meters, including 10.1 grams per ton gold over 41 meters. Uh, just some spectacular stuff coming out of that Ruby Hill project. And um, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch over to my uh, uh, to my Google Earth, my trusty Google Earth. Oh, I need to go to stop share first. Then I'll go to share screen again. And there we'll go to Google Earth Pro. All righty. So there what you see. That is, first of all, here's the town of Eureka. Here's the highway. Here's Ace Hardware. <laughs> and here's the uh, the Archimedes Pit. Now, all of that um, uh, Ruby Hill uh, Deeps and 426 zone, it actually is over in this area around here to the west of the pit where they've hit not only do they have the 426 zone, they have the uh, the Ruby Deep zone. The 426 zone starts right, ar right around here somewhere. And then Ruby Deeps is a little off to the west, a little more and deeper. And uh, what makes this important, the 426 zone can be accessed through the bottom of this Archimedes pit to the west here. And uh, after you get through the 426 zone, then you get into the Ruby Deep zone. But what's really caught the public's imagination of late is, as you can see, there's a series of faults here, um, structural uh, packages. Actually, I'm going to go into the Archimedes pit because there's the blackjack zone that appears around here. As you can see, there's alteration here. Um, in the bottom of the pit. Actually, what you can also see is where this pit uh, had um, failed. And that's the reason that they stopped mining there. But they left this blackjack zone, uh, which is a stock work zone that um, looks like a, uh, or a, um, oh gosh, the name uh, fails me right now. I'll, I'll remember it later. But as you can see, there's a big alteration package right there. That's right about where the blackjack zone appears. And then these faults here uh, is where they're hitting the CRD with that 60 grams per ton of uh, gold and uh, what was it, 900 grams of silver, uh, some zinc and lead. This CRD system that they're hitting is quite spectacular. And the next company I'm going to talk about um, is a company called uh, Paycor. And Paycor has this Ruby Hill mine uh, right here. And there's a important structure that goes right, as you can see, these structures go right through Ruby Hill. And I'm just going to do a quick uh, uh, meter here. So if you go from the edge of this pit all the way to Ruby Hill, you're looking at about two kilometers there. Um, well, actually, you could start it. Let's say we'll start it um, at the blackjack zone. So we'll start over here and go to the Ruby Hill. That's 2.6 kilometers um, to the Ruby Hill. From, from That's Paycor's deposit there. And um, so here you've got this tremendous uh, situation happening. Over here, you've got the uh, high-grade gold system at 426 and Ruby Hill. Then over here, you've got the CRDs with the uh, uh, tremendous grades of base metals and also um, high-grade gold. And you know, usually you're not going to see high grade gold and silver in these kind of systems. So what it looks like is you've got an overprint of precious metals uh, into a CRD. And that's why those faults or these structures are so important, because these are the structures that are bringing in 
uh, the mineralization for the CRD, as well as the uh, the plumbing system, if you will, or the path of least resistance where these cracks in the earth allow the, the metal bearing fluids to make their way up to surface. And um, as you can see, there's a pretty complex network of faulting here. And, and that's, um, you know, where they're coming into the, the right package of rock. Then you've got Ruby Hill here. And at Ruby Hill, they're finding the same situation, CRD with high-grade gold overprint, and that's Paycor's ground. Um, and then the third company I'm going to talk about is if you keep following this fault down here, you run into Golden Lake. This corner of the property is where Golden Lake uh, has their ground starts. This Eureka Tunnel is very important because at the Eureka Tunnel and they're drilling up around here, they hit some very high grades and some CRD mineralization that looks quite exciting. Another aspect of this project is I'm going to zoom out a little bit here. And this part of the project from the Eureka Tunnel all the way down here and in here, you can see a, an alteration uh, zones. And um, this is also where there's a coincident big geochem anomaly. So, and look at all this faulting that's happening here as well. And this um, alteration zones, you've got past mining operations here, as well as up over here at the uh, Eureka Tunnel. These old timers, they moved a lot of material around and they weren't doing that for fun. Um, so, you know, uh, this area um, that uh, PACOR is, or I mean, Golden Lake is involved with, this is a big geochem anomaly here. Their, their Eureka Tunnel in their Catland area, that's what this is called, um, is where they have a big geochem anomaly. I'm going to go into that a little bit. Uh, further later on. Here is, um, then you get into uh, the ground that Timberline owns. Look at all this past mining operations in here. Uh, it continues. There's more past mining operations. In fact, uh, their key project is over here at Lookout Mountain. Past mining operations. Over here is where they're getting a, um, uh, they have a resource and they're growing that resource uh, and they have a big uh, geophysical anomaly um, that suggests that that could be the plumbing for this system. Uh, their ground continues. You've got more alteration right there. Um, uh, and it continues all the way down here. This whole corridor here um, from, let's say, where Timberline starts, and you go into the uh, ground that um, the uh, Golden Lake uh, has, Ruby Hill, and uh, the um, Archimedes Pit is a very structurally complex and significant area of historical mining. And um, as I said, you know, these structures that uh, affect um, the, the Archimedes Pit they continue through Ruby Hill. They come into the corner of where um, uh, where Golden Lake is involved. Then you've got these mining operations and uh, big uh, geochem on the uh, Golden Lakes property. You've got lots more operations, historical operations here where they moved. This is Timberline's ground where they moved a lot of material around. Again, these old timers that were mining from the 1800s uh, for a hundred years in this Eureka camp, it was really well known for CRD deposits. Um, and um, what's, again, what's really exciting about the CRDs in this Eureka trend here is that they are, um, they ha also have high grade gold in them. So you've got this overprint of high-grade gold 
along with very, if you took the gold and the silver out and just looked at these as CRDs alone with uh, the silver, or I mean the uh, zinc, um, you know, zinc and lead, these would be, uh, and silver, these would be great um, CRD projects alone without the uh, overprint of gold. So that's a, a, a very exciting situation from, let's say, right about here where the Timberline ground starts through the Golden Lakes ground, through the uh, Ruby Hill ground, and uh, by um, uh, PACOR, and then your uh, the elephant in the room, if you will, which is the um, uh, Archimedes pit that's controlled by IED Gold, where they're just hitting it out of the park at this uh, this project. Um, it's a and. What is also exciting is they think that this pit, you go deeper down a thousand meters or so, and you run into what looks like a very large geophysical anomaly, which could be a, um, a porphyry target uh, about um, a thousand feet below surface uh, and keeps on going. That could be the plumbing for the entire region, or you might have uh, plumbing coming at different locations, uh, other porphyries. Um, this is this area here that I'm showing you from the uh, the um, Archimedes Pit that I-80 has, the Ruby Hill, Eureka Tunnel, Lookout Mountain Resource. I believe that this entire region is going to be the most important uh, new discovery area in Nevada in a very long time. Uh, just the exceptional stuff happening here. And those are the four companies that are involved. Fortunately, those four companies are also uh, sponsors of my website and they've been kind enough to uh, uh, enable me to do a lot of um, uh, research on this sector. Are on this region that I think uh, very highly of. So now I'm going to go back to uh, I-80 Gold here and uh, talk about, oh, I forgot to do the screen share. Oh, no, I'm screen sharing. Hope this is all working out nicely. Uh, I'm going to isolate this chart here, uh, get rid of some of these ads, and... Um, I want to show you this chart because this is a super powerful chart here. Uh, as you can see, IED Gold has been on a tremendous run since November. That's when they announced that big hole with uh, 60 grams of gold uh, over 10 meters, high-grade silver, high-grade lead and zinc as well. Uh, the stock blasted off. It's trading aggressively above its 200-day moving average. Uh, and the 50-day moving average is within days of a golden cross. And uh, they have plenty of catalysts to uh, to keep that going. So I think they're on to some great stuff. Okay, so now I've done Golden Lake. Let's look at Paycor. Um, I'm going to isolate their chart. Uh, Paycor is, um, as I said, right below... Um, I-80, and uh, they've been on a great run. They announced some uh, impressive results. I'll go into that in a few minutes. But look at this chart. Uh, it's been following a very similar path to um, I-80 gold, aggressively trading above its 50-day 50, uh, 50 moving average. The company's only been trading for less than a year, so uh, the 200-day is undefined. But I think what you're going to start to see is this 50-day moving average start to turn up and move aggressively. I-80 Gold is bringing a lot of attention uh, to the area that um, uh, that um, um, hold on here. I want to make sure I got that. Um, uh, IED is bringing a lot of attention to this area, and uh, it's um, it's good. They've got some great stuff happening. So, I wanted to go into their news section here. You know, I often say in my um, reports that, uh, well, let's uh, let's pull this up because this is some great news right there. Um, 
Uh, I often say to people to do your homework, and what I'm showing you today is how I go about doing my homework. I look at the corporate, the news releases. I go into their corporate presentations. I do my homework on Google Earth, and um, I, you know, I think that's similar stuff that investors can do. So I'm kind of showing you the tools that I use uh, to do my homework. But here you have. Uh, Paycor's uh, news release: Paycor Minerals intersects 14.8 gram or meters of 6.3 percent zinc, 10.3 percent lead, 376 grams of silver, and 7.1 grams of gold. Uh, included in that was 5.8 meters of 9.4 percent zinc, 3 percent lead, 248 grams of silver. 15.9 grams of gold from the polymetallic FAD project. And um, what's important to remember about this FAD project is this is a CRD system with an overprint of high-grade gold. This is what the model looks like. This is the historic uh, zone. And here is the step-out drilling that they're doing. Um, very exciting stuff. In fact, uh, they also have a whole pending that I'm really eager to see. Uh, uh, you know, and again, I go back to my um, my. I'm going to stop share here again, and I'm going to go back to um, this uh, this uh, Google Earth Pro here and share that. And again, two kilometers away from this let's say the start of the CRD system, um, you've got a similar system of high-grade uh, CRD with an overprint of high-grade gold, just like you're seeing over here. So it, it's reasonable for people to do some arm waving and think that this corridor from, let's say the Archimedes pit all the way down to Ruby Hill um, is fertile for CRD with high-grade gold overprint. I guess the next question you would ask is, where is all this coming from? And, um, you know, a likely candidate is that geophysics that um, uh, I-80 gold has been um, sharing. Let me, uh, let me see if I can quickly find that. I'm going to go back to I-80 gold here. Um, share this screen. Okay, let's go back to I-80 Gold's website. And uh, I believe the geophysics is in this news release, the November 29th news release. Uh, let me see here if I can quickly find that. Oh, actually, it's in their corporate presentation. So let's let's go to their corporate presentation. Uh, investors. And... No, no, presentation. That's what I want. And ah, where are you? Sorry, sorry, sorry. This isn't working as well as I was hoping. <laughs> Bear with me a second here, folks. I need to move this over, get their presentation up there. Ah, there it is, corporate presentation. So now I'm going to pull up their corporate presentation. And I believe this is where they put the geophysics that is quite exciting stuff. Uh, there's Granite Creek. Where did the heck did they put that? Just, I'm sorry, it's taken me a second here. Uh, oh, no wonder. Ah, I'm in the wrong period of time here, so. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> sorry for the delay, folks, but uh, this is just some important stuff that I'm I'm quite uh, excited about. I hope I can find that geophysics data. Okay, I'm not going to keep looking around for it, but um, I'm going to go back to the uh, Google Earth here. And... Um, there we go. So um, yeah, they had. There's a big geophysical anomaly uh, down around a thousand feet, and it keeps on going, and it's centered right around here. 
Uh, I'm sorry I couldn't find it quickly enough, but uh, I don't want to belabor the point. Uh, they think that, that that quite possibly could be the source of where this CRD and uh, is coming from and also the mineralization for um, Ruby Hill. I think this thing whole, is all one big package here um, that uh, that uh, is quite spectacular for a CRD. You know, one of the big CR, uh, success stories in the mining sector over the last few years was the um, uh, Arizona Mining's discovery of the Taylor Hermosa project. And um, um, they were bought out for a billion and a half what makes this um, quite exciting is so far, if you look at Ruby Hill and the uh, CRD that uh, I-80 is finding, the grades are orders of magnitude larger. Um, so, you know, that company got bought out for a billion and a half. These CRDs are very profitable operations and uh, very exciting stuff. So I'm going to go back to... Uh, I'm going to go back to the oh, the PowerPoint presentation here. I wanted to bring this up. This is from, um, this is on Paycors. Uh, what I wanted to highlight here is the, um, what you're looking at is, I had to zoom in a little bit on it, but okay, so here's the I-80 ground. Here's the um, ground that pay, belongs to Paycor. Timberline is over here. Golden Lake is here. And then Timberline. I showed you that earlier on the, um, on the, um, uh, on the uh, Google Earth. Okay, so let's get back to the website. So I'll go back to, uh, I already did that. So there you go, Paycor Minerals intersects 14.8% or meters of uh, uh, high grade zinc, lead, silver, and gold. Just an exceptional system, this CRD hits that are happening from, from, um, uh, from um, I-80 gold uh, down to um, Paycor. And in fact, Golden Lake has also hit some uh, uh, CRDs with high-grade gold. They're really not getting any attention. In fact, I'm going to go to them next. Uh, let's uh, let's do the share screen. Okay, so here's Golden Lake. Uh, I'm going to isolate this chart for you. And uh, we'll just isolate Golden Lake. Now, this one's following a similar path to Paycor, trading above its 52-week low, or 50-day 50, 50 moving average, comes off of its low down here when, um, when uh, I-80 Gold started to make some noise with their CRD and their 60-gram hit. They've come off that bottom. They're now trading above the 50-day moving average, um, I'm an advisor to Golden Lake, and um, I've uh, we're talking about the possibility of getting some drilling done fairly soon. Another thing that I'm going to do is uh, get an interview together with Don Hoy. Um, Don is a exceptionally talented um, geophysic or a, a geologist, and um, I've known Don for several years. And uh, he's now the um, the uh, um, the head of uh, or VP exploration. And um, okay, so if you remember from earlier, I'm going to get onto Golden Lake now. If you remember from earlier, I talked about the Eureka Tunnel, um, and they did some drilling down here, and. They got some extremely good stuff that not a lot of people are paying attention to, uh, but I sure am because uh, let me oh let me get rid of this screen, and I'm gonna go down here to uh, this 2020 results, and here's some from that drilling that I just highlighted Southwest Eureka Tunnel. 
look at the zinc numbers. They're getting some good sniffs there, including 4% uh, zinc. Uh, 17 grams of gold, some copper and lead in there as well, uh, 1.52, uh, 2.5 um, uh, lead, uh, some copper, 123 grams of gold, 21 grams uh, or 21 grams of gold and 123 grams of silver. Um, these are not numbers to uh, not pay attention to. Again, zinc, uh, up to 2% zinc, 4% lead, some copper, some silver, uh, 44 grams of silver, 239 grams of silver. That's from the radio tower target. Northeast uh, Eureka Tunnel, zinc, lead, silver, gold. It's um, uh, there. Uh, here's another one. They got some zinc, lead, 8.9% lead, 1.1% zinc. It's not up to those grades of um, that you're talking about at uh, at I eighty gold and um, and go and Paycor, but here you go. This is from their Eureka Tunnel target. You know where I showed you those uh, series of drill holes? At the Eureka Upper Mineralized Zone, 1.9% zinc, 1% lead, 65 grams of gold, or silver, 9.16 grams of gold over 24.54 meters starting at surface down to 24.54 meters. Then they had a bonanza grade CRD, 3.23 meters of 57 grams of gold, 452 grams of silver, 7.23% uh, zinc or lead, and 11.99% zinc. Now you're starting to talk about the same kind of numbers that, um, that, uh, has got everybody excited about I-80 gold. And this little Golden Lake Minerals only has a, uh, a Golden Lake Exploration only has a valuation under $10 million. Uh, and, you know, they are, uh, again, I, I talk about that area from I-80 gold, uh, um, Paycor, and you can't ignore what Golden Lake has been uh, discovering, especially when you consider, let me get back to the uh, share screen with Google Earth. Here you go again. I want to highlight this Google Earth map. You've got high-grade CRD uh, with an overprint of high-grade gold here. Down here, same thing. High-grade CRD with high-grade gold. Down here. Oh, and, and up here, it's also high-grade silver. Right here, in this by this Eureka tunnel, in the drilling up over here, they're hitting high-grade um, uh, CRD with high-grade silver and, and uh, high-grade gold. Then you look at, at this, uh, again, I'm going to point out this... Um, this uh, um, area here where you've got a big geochem anomaly right in around here where you can see alteration in the in the area as well and old mining golden lake min exploration has an exceptional project um, i call this the corridor of the corridor to success right here you've got the uh the part of the um uh, uh, Jackson Fault, uh, this area here, this can't be ignored. Um, down here, you've got two faults, two faults connecting. That's a good place to be looking for mineralization. Then you continue to this Eureka Tunnel. Those old timers moved a lot of material around. You go up in here and they did a bunch of drilling where they got high grade uh, CRD with high grade silver and gold overprint. Then you've got this big area right here 
uh, with geochem all the way down to here. This is an exceptional project that's getting no tension in an area that has got the investor imagination for Paycor and for uh, IED Gold. This really can't be ignored. And I'm looking forward to um, uh, meeting with Don Hoy and doing one of these uh, one of these um, uh, interviews on Zoom. And uh, I think uh, I think you're going to be really impressed with what we talk about. Okay, so now I want to. Oh, I got to uh, stop the share. I did the stop share. Now I'm going to go back and. Uh, the next company I'm going to talk about, let me move this out of the way, is Timberline. So it's going into back to this Eureka trend. Let me uh, pull up the, uh, oh, that's the Golden Lake. I want to do a new one for Timberline. We're going to isolate that chart. And uh, here again, came it came to life in November, trading above its 50-day moving average. The 50-day moving average is bottoming. I suspect that the next move is upward. The reason that I say that is they have a bunch of catalysts ahead of them. They have a bunch of, uh, they've been doing a lot of drilling and um, they have a, uh, a lots of drill holes pending. I think what you're going to see here is this 50-day start to move up and go through a golden cross when it the 50-day crosses through the 200-day. Um, so I'm uh, I'm excited about uh, what Timberline has now. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna first of all I want to highlight this um, this resource here and uh, this big geochemical anomaly or geophysical anomaly and big IP anomaly. This could be the plumbing system for this. Uh, this zone here and the recent results they've had out from around here, this Os Oswego target where they have two structures and one, there's a cross-cutting structure right here that uh, guess where they got their best results from right here. This is an exciting uh, target as well. So you got a resource over here, a big IP anomaly here, and then these kicks of... Uh, uh, high-grade gold as well, right at the intersection of two faults. Okay, so now I'm going to stop share here. And I'm going to get Google Earth back up again. So back to my trusty Google Earth. I'm going to zoom out. And here you are at Lookout Mountain. This Lookout Mountain, they past production, past mining operations. They're finding over here. The resource, uh, again, lots of structural story around here um, that looks quite exceptional. This all is part of, um, of uh, uh, PECOR's ground. Um, you follow it further down here. Look at this big alteration zone. More alteration over here and up here along this big fault that comes through there. Um, where else? There was some other historical mining on this property that looked quite interesting. Oh, up here. Uh, where is it? Oh, look at all this old uh, um, uh, mining operations. Again, these old timers, they weren't moving rock around for the fun of it. They were looking for high grade material from the 1860s through to the 1960s. And um, this is an exceptional region here, this whole region. And um, uh, it's worth, It's important to note that uh, Timberline has the biggest land package in this area. Um, a lot of this ground uh, right around here, all the way down to here, belongs to... Um, um, uh, to uh, Timberline. Uh, so they're expanding the resource at Lookout Mountain. Uh, and they've got a ge big geophysical anomaly. They've got this Oswego situation. Um, in fact, next time I get, um, it, it, I should have, uh, I expect that um, Timberline 
we'll have some news out in the not too distant future. So what I'm going to do when uh, when I get him on there is uh, or get um, Patrick on the horn again. I'm going to go into uh, this structural story because it's quite impressive and uh, he can really tell it better than me. But again, you've got mineralization all the way from way up there, all the way down here and uh, uh, alteration, structural story, geological packages, tremendously uh, impressive uh, area. And why isn't my stop share stopping? There we go. All right, so the next company on the docket is, uh, I talked about nine, oh, nine mile metals. My lovely little nine mile metals that I don't think is going to be a 15, 14 or $15 million valuation stock for very much longer. Okay, so here's the chart of nine mile. Uh, as you can see, the 50-day moving average and the 200-day moving average are both trending upwards. Uh, and it's well above its 200-day moving average, which means back here it went through a golden cross. And it's right now trading on its 50-day moving average at the close on... Um, uh, oh, that's not the correct close. i got to refresh that screen. But... Actually, they're trading up above here somewhere. So they're above their 50-day moving average. Um, and um, let's go to their news releases. So this was an important one that I had an interview with the guys that manage this company. And um, what they announced was they received a full grant and initiative, initiates Nine Mile Brook VMS project bulk sample analysis they're going to do a 200 or 2000 to 3000 uh, ton bulk sample here they got a, um, th a thin section showing uh, the the various different um, um, uh, sulfides the core that they had was just riddled with sulfides at this uh, lens zone but um, what I'm going to do is I now want to bring up Google Earth again. And my trusty Google Earth, we're going to go over to the nine mile lens. So now we go over to New Brunswick. And a um, couple things I want to point out to everybody. So there's a big geophysical anomaly that follows this, uh, this structure that continues down here. And then there's a hinge right about there. And right here, they hit over a 10 meter thick um, lens with over 10% copper in it. Now, this hinge here, if you follow this structure in geophysics, there's a hinge right here. I think that that's a likely suspect of where the um, the source of the lens is coming from. But also, you've got this structure here. You've got another structure coming through here, another structure through here. It has a bend to it. It continues. And then you've got another structure over here. This is really, this is interesting stuff because this also could have VMS in it. I think they're going to make discoveries up here as well um, because this is a big geophysical anomaly uh, and it's quite an interesting structural story. Um, and as I said, the big news that they recently put out is that in addition to receiving that um, grant to do a bulk sample at the nine mile lens, um, they've also started drilling into what could be the source of the lens. Um, so that's, they're at a very exciting time um, for the discovery. Th this is such a thick lens 
um, you know, 10 meters thick with extreme high grade, it cannot be very far from the source. Uh, and there's a rock package that sticks out in the uh, geophysics with a hinge right here. And then in really close proximity to that hinge is where they found the lens. This is a very uh, uh, likely suspect of where that lens came from. But now I'm going to zoom out. And over here is where they drilled and found uh, another VMS with uh, ex ex excellent grades of uh, zinc and um, and uh, lead and possibly some silver and maybe some gold in there as well. Now, what I want to point out to you here is this structure that comes through here. Right there is where they found that uh, VMS lens mm -hmm. uh, or that VMS hits of uh, what looks like uh, the top of a VMS system. So now this company has two uh, VMS discoveries. And right here is the Brunswick 12 mine which is one of the world's largest VMS deposits. It, it's, there's mines all over this region. It's called the uh, Brunswick uh, Mining Camp. And, um, you know, look how close they are in proximity uh, with both the Nine Mile Lens and the California Lake VMS. And they both have these interesting structural stories that, um, um, could be the plumbing for the uh, both of the, or, or their respective structural stories could be the plumbing, uh, the vent that allowed these uh, uh, massive sulfides to make their way to surface. Okay, so now I want to stop share and um, I'm going to go back to uh, Nine Miles um, website. So here we go. Okay, so this is talking about their uh, their grant. So just before that, they had this news release out that they announced the drilling to start on that Nine Mile Brook VMS project. That's where that lens is. Uh, now let's go back to um, oh here we go the uh, the day before that. They announced the XRF results from their uh, California Lake VMS that I highlighted on uh, on um, Google um, Earth. There, uh, the XRF readings were the zinc 8.74, It's it's dominated by zinc, but if you look at the zinc and the lead. 13.97% uh, combined, 9.12, 8.24, 15.81, And, you know, in the zonation of grade of these uh, CRDs, what you're generally going to see is a zinc, lead, and silver uh, uh, at the top, and then another zone below that, a copper and uh, gold, and they they got some sniffs of copper. Now, XRF uh, devices don't give you uh, very good readings on your gold and silver, but I think they're going to come out with some excellent silver numbers and also some sniffs of gold in there as well. Um, and uh, here's another, this was the second hole that they announced. Look at these numbers, all the way up to 40% zinc with uh, some, some lead in there some copper in there as well, 10% uh, zinc, 25% zinc, 10% zinc, 7.58, 16% zinc, 9% zinc, and uh, good combinations of uh, lead and zinc, 41.27%, 27.9, 20.2%, 10 uh, Really great looking stuff from that California Lake situation as well. And um, what I really find quite intriguing is that they, they the reason that they've been hit, hit two for two 
is they're using a company called EarthX that uh, does, um, you know, big data uh, algorithms to to filter out the noise from the historical and recent news or recent geophysics to help them pinpoint exactly where to drill. And um, they're getting uh, they're two for two. So the, and they have a bunch more targets based on EarthX's work. And I'm hoping that I'm supposed to be meeting with or doing a couple more interviews next week with the guys uh, from uh, Nine Mile. And I'm hoping that they have some geophysical images to, to share because I'd like to uh, go into that. So Nine Mile Metals has about a $13 million valuation. They're in elephant country for uh, uh, VMS deposits. They're close proximity to a monster. And uh, with the grades that they're getting of copper at that lens, I think they could have the, uh, the jewel in the crown of the entire region. That's saying a lot because this region is full of mines, big mines, it's the third most important VMS camp in the world. But uh, these grades that they're getting of copper are significantly higher than anything in the entire camp. If they find the source, I think that source is going to also have high-grade copper and zinc in it and just blow the top off this, uh, this company and get worldwide attention in the mining sector uh, for the company. So I'm keeping my fingers crossed that they'll... They'll hit the source of that lens in the not too distant future. Okay, the next company I'm going to talk about um, is Sokomen. Sokomen, uh, here's another chart that looks quite exciting. Um, with Sokomen, just give me a second here to isolate the chart. Trading well above its 50 day moving average, trading above its. Uh, uh, 50 day or uh, 200 day um, and actually I'm sorry to do this but um, this chart that I'm looking at here uh, is an old chart let me refresh the screen because uh, oh no there you go so um, that was the correct chart so now I want to go to their uh, project summary and uh, what I wanted to look at here to show you folks is, I'm actually going to go back. Oh, no, I didn't do it correctly. Let me go forward there. And uh, let's go back to news. Here's what's really got me exciting about, um, about Sokomen. Uh, they hit... They, on their 463 zone uh, that they recently started drilling again, this that's within days of drilling, if it's not already drilling, it cut 39.6 meters of 12.5 grams per ton gold, including 10 meters of 41.97 grams per ton gold. Just spectacular stuff. And right here is where you see um that's that zone that they're that they're talking about that big thick intersection of high grade now they had hit some uh, up here it was thinner intersections also you know some good gold gut numbers gets thicker gets higher grade and then bam they hit this thick intersection 12.5 grams of gold over 36.9 meters um, look at that metal factor, 495, 430, 306, just spectacular looking stuff. And um, what was the three meters of 102 grams? This is jewelry box uh, numbers, folks. And uh, uh, this is the kind of stuff that was reminiscent of the Swan Zone at... Um, at um, um, at uh, where is it here? At um, Fosterville Mine in uh, in in in, um, in uh, Australia, and uh, here's the one I want to bring up. Um, the um, 
this is uh, this is the um, what I think is the start of a swan zone, and why that's so important is the swan zone was a uh, was a company maker for um, for uh, Kirkland Lake. They were a big company to start with. It sent their stock into orbit. Uh, they were one of the best performing uh, gold mining stocks on the in the business. The reason that they were was because the Swan Zone was such a low grade and, or high grade and low cost production that they were making fabulous um, returns. And um, I think that uh, the folks at Sokoman are onto one of those. And uh, let me get back here. I wanted to bring up their project. And then I'm going to go to the Moosehead project because there's some interesting information in here. And this is why I always invite people to do their homework and go to the, um, go to the company website because there's lots of great information in these. Uh, websites and I, I'm afraid that not enough people um, not enough people go to these uh, their websites and do the research and it's really worth your while because you can find uh, tremendous nuggets of wisdom uh, in these um, uh, presentations so here they're talking about you can see how close they are to newfound gold. Newfound gold has a billion dollar valuation, looking for orogenic gold systems, just like at Moosehead. Um, here again, look at how far they are from uh, Moosehead, or, or from um, the, uh, there's the uh, high grade area, the North Pond, the key structure, the Valentine Lake structure, uh, here they're talking about origenic gold, the veining history, very similar to what you saw at uh, the Swan Zone. Some visible gold in the core, always like to see that. Um, where's that model? So here's their eastern trend. And there's that big hit at the end of the eastern trend where they get down to the deepest levels and here's uh an interesting um presentation that this has been put together by their structural geologist and um i hope i'm on share screen properly here oh my gosh nobody's seen all this that i've been talking about uh on the share screen oh no let me bring it up can't believe i did this Nonetheless, this is the big news that you want to pay attention to. So here's the eastern trend. They've had a bunch of hits uh, in this eastern, uh, uh, eastern trend, including the upper trend and the western trend. Then they got down to about, uh, let's say, 350 meters or something like that. And boom, they hit this uh, cross-cutting uh, zone with 39 meters of uh, 12 grams, 10 grams of 41, uh, 42 grams of gold. They had a three meter intersection there of over 100 grams of gold. So now I'm going to go down and look at this. This is the swan zone, swan zone down here. And um, what I wanted to point out is look at the different directions that that those zones that the various zones are going in. And um, you've got some coming this way, and then you've got this reminds me of the eastern trend, and then you've got this uh, this other one coming up here. Let's go back to this map. Look at that. That looks like a swan zone lookalike. Uh, and uh, there's some interesting stuff in here as well. Um, if you go down, this is a sample of the of rocks in the um, Fosterville rock sample on Moosehead Core. You're seeing very similar stuff in the uh, Swan Zone as you see here uh, in this uh, in the uh, 463 zone 
So again, I, I think that um, I think that um, Sokomen is into their first jewelry box hit. I'm going to go back to this model because this is exciting stuff. You've got an, a zone that goes this way, and then you've got a, cro a zone coming up from the west uh, up in this direction that still remains wide open. And again, it's reminiscent of this jewelry box. They got a jewelry box hit, and this these zones are very similar to the Swan Zone at Fosterville. You get why I'm so excited about this uh, this jewelry box hit down here, um, and this is a structural interpretation from a real expert in this sort of stuff. So uh, there you go. That's the story on um, on Sokeman. Next, I'm going to go to high gold again, trading above its 50-day moving average, traded above its 200-day moving average recently. Let's go into their uh, news releases. High gold intersects 18.76 grams per ton gold over 120 meters at their JT deposit in Alaska. Look at this zone here. Um, this is their resource area. Uh, they've been, look at this part here. They plan on coming in to the side of it. So this would be some of the first material to be mined. <clears throat> Very nice grades. There is a parallel um, zone over here. And uh, they've also got, I'm going to go to their corporate presentation. Actually, I've got it right here. Okay, so now let's look at, so that's the, the resource area. And then I'm going to go to their Ellis zone. This is four kilometers away. Here's their JT deposit. Here's their... Um, Ellis zone. They had, uh, they're getting some nice continuity in, a, in this uh, goldish colored rock uh, material here is a horizon that is in the same kind of rock as at the JT deposit. And look at the continuity of the high grade. Here was the exciting one from last year, 6.4 meters of 577 grams of gold. Uh, 6.2 meter or grams of gold, 25 grams of gold, and 61 grams of gold, 6.7 and 10 grams of gold, 28 grams of gold, 14 grams of gold, 11 grams of gold. Some exceptionally nice continuity of grade is developing here in this Ellis zone. Um, I'm I'm really impressed with what. They have at the JT zone and at their uh, Ellis zone, and they have a whole bunch of drill holes pending. So keep an eye, a close eye on high gold. I think you're going to like what you see out of them in the not too distant future. Next up is Walker River Resources. As you can see here on their chart, they just had a big move um, recently. And... Um, there it's isolated. So it blasted through its 50 day moving average. It's making a run towards its 200 day moving average. The 50 day moving average is starting to turn up and uh, and it's through doing this on high volume. Um, so the market is getting quite exuberant about what they've got coming. So I'm gonna go back to my favorite exploration tool which is the uh, Google Earth. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down here and find the uh, Le Pond Canyon. There we go. So now we're going to zoom over to Nevada and uh, the Le Pond Canyon project. Um, I'm going to zoom in here. And what I'm going to talk about is, uh, let's change this slightly so you can see it in the center of the picture. You see this winding road up here um, and this big fault here, sec another one here, another one here, and uh, big alteration here. Here's the La Pond Canyon. Um, and uh, they've got basically high-grade gold, 
way over here, all the way over to here, from right around here, all the way up here, up to this road, they hit high grade. They've drilled some holes from right about here and uh, they're starting to drill vertical holes into this. You see, they've been kind of challenged because they've been drilling from the side of the mountain and that's always a tricky operation. Now they're able to go up here and start drilling right down the guts of the system and uh, they're not very far from where they hit high grade right around here. And um, yeah, this this gold system is from here to here and from here to here. And I think it continues because this faulting goes through here. And um, you can see alteration up in here as well. And there's some old showings up here. So I think this whole structural trend goes from one side of the canyon all the way over to the other side. Look at that alteration, more alteration, and uh, big structures, more alteration, and and just lots of high-grade gold throughout this, um, this area. And um, they've been drilling, as I said, and they should have some more drill results from La Pond Canyon and their Pikes Peak target. So um, Walker River Resources is another one to keep a close eye on. Uh, let me go back to screen share here. And um, so here is what I was showing you on Google Earth. Here's their new hotspot. They hit it up here. They hit it down here. They got gold all the way through where I showed you on Google Earth. And look at the assays, 7.8 66 grams, 43 grams, 22 grams, 21 grams, 34, 34, uh, 30, 13.6. Just some really great looking stuff. And I think what, I really think they're at a seminal moment at the La Pond Gold Project because I think that now that they can get on top of that mountain and drill down it is exciting, which they recently did some holes with that, uh, doing that. Plus, they've got uh, the Pikes Peak target that could be a porphyry that, you know, dry, drove the fluids over from um, from Pikes Peak all the way over here to La Pond Canyon and the La Pond Mountain. So I'm really bullish on what um, Walker River Resources is doing, and I think you should check them out as well. Galantis Gold, I'm really happy to announce that um, Galantis Gold is back in uh, participating as a sponsor um, for my website. So I, I really enjoy talking to Mario Stefano smart guy who's uh you know really understands the um uh the gold mining business uh the the gold business we're going to have a good chat and we're going to get an update on how things are going at their uh, their project in Ireland but uh as you can see it's recently gone through it was kind of going sideways but the 50 day moving average has now done a golden cross uh, it's trading quite significantly above the 50-day and the 200-day. Um, I think things are getting uh, exciting for them again, um, you know, and uh, I'm really happy to have them as sponsors and be able to do a series of uh, interviews with them. And uh, let me let me get to their website because there's something I want to show you that... Uh, I don't think a lot of people are paying attention to when it comes to Galantis. Here I am on their um, on their website, on their um, corporate presentation. You can see here is Dalradian Gold. A lot of investors that have followed me over the years will remember Dalradian Gold because I started following it when, when it was 25 cents a share. It ultimately got bought out. It was the only company I ever uh, recommended in Ireland. A huge winner for the audience. Uh, and um, now Galantis Gold has a, a project in close proximity. And here is the chart that I wanted to show you that I don't think enough people 
I mean their map that I'm going to show you that I don't think enough people are paying attention to because not only do they have high-grade gold at their Kearney vein, and they have high-grade gold at their Joshua vein, and at their Kestrel vein, then they've got this Kerr vein in between. I think that this is an orogenic gold system. These systems go down for thousands of meters. And um, uh, they're, the Swan Zone is the, I talked about the Swan Zone earlier, being a company maker for Kirkland Lake. And um, they, uh, they uh, were ultimately bought out at a huge uh, premium. And um, what I think they have here is, these veins are so tightly packed that I think that they're all going to connect at depth. And if that happens, this could be just a monstrously big uh, gold system. Um, and uh, that's the big story that I don't think a lot of people are paying attention to. And I'm looking forward to talking to Mario about this uh, the drilling that they're doing at the Kerr, Kearney, Joshua, Kestrel, this whole tightly packed group of orogenic gold um, um, uh, in this area and um, uh, the potential that it could all be uh, coming together at depth. Now, uh, let's go back to their news releases. And I'm just going to pull this up here. Oh, sorry, I'm in the wrong place. Uh, news. Okay. So here's some of the news releases. Uh, Galantis Gold, 14 grams over 4.5 meters. Uh, 31 grams over 4.4 meters. Uh, there's a bunch more of these. Um, where are we here? 21 grams over 2.4 meters. Uh, 31 grams over 7 meters. 17.4 grams in, of gold and 74.6 grams of silver over 13 meters. These are big, juicy intersections. And um, what you can call those is dilation zones or jewelry boxes and they're they're hitting a bunch of them on those the Kearney and Joshua but this is suggestive that um, you know this is a big powerful system that's breaking up the rock that you're seeing openings in the rock uh, where you get these uh, dilation zones and big nice high-grade gold in there and a bunch of them in different spots on these two veins and and then you got that vein in the middle and I think it's all connected into one big vein. I'm hoping to have Mario on the show next early next week so I'm not going to go too too much into uh, Galantis other than to say that's the big picture for me with Galantis. They've got these three veins potential to find more it's an orogenic gold system they're hitting dilation zones with very high grade jewelry box kind of stuff and i think it all connects at depth and uh, i think they're onto something very special and the market really isn't uh, giving them the the due that i think that they are 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 warranted but i also think that gold is starting to get a lot hotter and uh, these good gold stories, there's not a lot of them. Or uh, Galantis Gold definitely has one of them. Stay tuned for that interview that I'll be doing with, um, with uh, Mario Stefano very soon. Okay, now I'm going to go to the next company, which is Prismo. Prismo is another company with one of these power charts. Um, Let's uh, let's highlight it here. So we'll zoom into it. See, they went through a golden cross there. And look what happens after a golden cross. This gets very, very bullish. And um, they've actually been performing very nicely since bucking the trend of gold stocks, our silver stocks, um, since the summertime. Had a significant breakout. Uh, had a golden cross here. 
And um, then they had a couple important news releases out that I want to bring up next. Um, what did I do? What did I do? What did I do? I hope I didn't. Ah, I didn't mess it up too badly. <laughs> Thought maybe I uh, I uh, closed the screen improperly incorrectly here. Okay, so here is. Uh, let's go back and first. Here's uh, an important news release. Vizsla Silver to make a strategic investment in Prismo Metals and receive right of first refusal on the Palos Verdes concession. Uh, they're paying them 500 grand cash, $1.5 million in uh, Vizsla stock. I think that stock is, uh, is very cheap right now. So uh, this has the potential to perform very well. And they're also going to uh, form a joint technical committee. Then, shortly thereafter, they announced their drilling results. And uh, what was the highlight? 553 uh, silver equivalent grams per ton with four, or 4.18 uh, grams per ton gold, 207 grams per ton silver. They hit mineralization on all five holes. Here's the vein that they're, uh, the Palos Verdes uh, vein that they're uh, drilling into. It's really important to note in these um, epithermal veins that um, they often, um, you don't need a big strike length or uh, a lot of thickness to have an important mine. Irma Tanio, that's not very far from this one, is owned by First Majestic. And if you look at the physical footprint of the mine, and by the way, that's the best performing mine they have, it's only about 300 meters of strike length by about 300 meters of depth. And it's a fabulously profitable epithermal mine, uh, epithermal vein mine. And now Prismo looks like they've got something quite exceptional. And now they just need to find expand on that, find these hot zones inside of an epithermal vein system. And um, I think that the market believes that they have something like that. And uh, I think they're the, the company Vizsla, who's been finding a lot of extreme high-grade silver in this area in, right beside them, um, also believes that that's why they put a $2 million investment and wanted a first right of refusal uh, on the Palos Verdes project. And uh, I'm working to get them on an interview in the not too distant future as well. So stay tuned for that. Um, but a couple of great news releases from this company. Okay, I'm on to my last company now, which is Fireweed Zinc. And I'm not going to talk a great deal about Fireweed Zinc. Uh, because I have tentatively have an a interview with Brandon McDonald um, early next week. Uh, but look at this stock chart. Gone through a golden cross. The 50-day moving average went through the 200-day moving average. It's trading aggressively above its 200-day moving average. And there's a couple of reasons why it's doing that. I'm going to go to their website and uh, where are we here? Here we are. I'm going to go to their website and um, they had two important news releases out recently that I'm going to get into with, well, actually three. Fireweed announces increased to previously announced offering. This was the previously announced <laughs> offering the day before. Uh, that they announced the uh, Lundin family is leading a $27 million private placement into Fireweed Zinc, which was the next day was increased by $8 million. And uh, I think a lot of that has to do with this news release. Um, first assay results from the 2022 program at Boundary Rest Discovery returns best ever intersection at McMillan Pass. 124 meters of 12.3% zinc, 1.3% lead, 45 grams of silver, 46 grams of silver, including 60 meters of 19% zinc, 1.6% lead, 64 grams of silver. 
Here's uh, another important thing, uh, the highlights. At Boundary West Hole, NB22-002 intersected high-grade massive sulfides and veins. I just said what they were. Step-out hole successfully extended the Boundary West massive sulfide mineralization remains open in multiple directions, including towards where geological vectors suggest a feeder zone may be present in which higher grades and thicknesses may be found. And then Brandon McDonald had a great quote, and I quote, the first results from the 2022 program include the best intersection that we have ever had at Boundary Zone or anywhere on the property, including our Tom and Jason deposits. Boundary West seems to get higher grade the more we chase it to depth, and we see great potential for this massive sulfide zone. It is open a long strike on both sides and at depth, including in the direction towards the potential feeder structure. These are exceptional assays to kick off reporting of our 2022 drill results. End quote. They have a bunch more drill results coming. Last year, I did an interview with uh, um, Brandon, and we talked about... Um, you see, they've got these layers uh, of um, stratigraphic horizons. Think of it like layers in a cake. And uh, below that, uh, are these are big intersections, thick zone, long strike on it. My natural question was, well, where is all that coming from? Then last year, they, they drilled closer to this feeder zone structure that Brandon was talking about, and they got some good hits of massive sulfides. And I started to think, I asked him, well, does this mean that it's a potential VMS system that pumped all of that, um, that zinc into the uh, horizons? And he thought that that was a possibility. Now they followed it up on that, and bang. They're hitting their best grades uh, near that potential feeder structure. I can't wait to talk to Brandon about these results because um, I think that uh, things are about to, well, I think things are about to get very, very exciting. And, you know, I would add that the Lundin family is a uh, mining family dynasty. They have built mines. They know what mines look like. And to pump a bunch of money into um, a fireweed like they have, I think, is a very big testament to um, to the potential of the, uh, the project that uh, fireweed has just recently announced their best results from. And on the heels of that, a big investment from the Lundin family. And again, I'm working towards an interview with Brandon McDonald uh, to talk about that early next week. So stay tuned for that. This has been a long presentation, but I had a lot of important stuff to talk about. What I'm going to do in the YouTube um, uh, description, I'll put um, sections where you can find the specific company. So uh, if you want to check out the whole video. I hope you do. If you want to check out specific companies, just look in the description below and you'll be able to find those. And um, yeah, on that note, uh, as always, this show is for information purposes only. It's important to speak with your financial advisors before making any investment decisions and do your homework. I just showed you in throughout this show the kind of homework that I do. I go to the company's website, I look at their news releases, I look at their corporate presentations, I dig deeply into their data to try to find out what the gems of information. I go to Google Earth, I look at the structural story and around where they're finding stuff and past mining operations in the area. And this is the kind of important um research that I think that investors should do as well. It'll give you a better understanding of the companies you're investing in. It'll make you do less um, emotional trades and more intelligent trades. And I think that's the key to, to being a big winner in a bull market for gold, silver, copper, other commodities that I think we're starting to see the start of. 
we're coming out of a period that reminds me of 2000, the year 2000, when, you know, these kind of stocks were at tremendously undervalued historical lows. Uh, then we went on a 10 year bull market for these kind of metals. And uh, we're now back down to those coming out of the valuations, historically low valuations, much like it was in 2000. And I think we're set up for a, a tremendous bull market ahead for gold, silver, copper, other commodities. I think the U.S. dollar is rolling over. It has been on a tremendous run for most of this year because of the raising of interest rates by the Federal Reserve. But that party's over. The Federal Reserve is now talking about slowing down the rate of raising interest rates and also that they're scared of uh, of over tightening. And what that means is they're scared of a big recession. And uh, I think they should be. And I think that they're going to stop raising interest rates, which will take the steam out of the U.S. dollar. As the U.S. dollar has been strong in 2022, these metals have been weak. But now we're seeing stronger metals prices and weaker U.S. dollars. And that's the trend that I think is coming. And a lot of investors are going to make a lot of money. And they're going to make money by doing their homework and investing in quality. And I just showed you in this show how to do that homework, or at least how I do that homework. And I think more should. On that note, have a great day and we'll talk to you soon.